Hi everyone, um, today I'm going to make a stutter glitch effect in Reactor um, that takes a small sample of audio and plays it back uh, upon receiving a new MIDI note. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is delete the voice combiners at the end of the instrument that are created with any new instrument and I'm going to make the instrument mono as well so we're not going to need the voice combiners. Now, let's create a new macro and run some audio in. And inside the macro, uh, we're going to use a combination of a crossfader and a single delay module to create our effect. <clears throat> the audio is going to go into the first input of the crossfader, and the second input. Uh, will be fed by a single delay module that is itself fed by the output of the crossfader. And what that's going to do is when we turn uh, x to equal to 1 in the crossfader, it's going to play back the sound in the single delay repeatedly. All right, so let's duplicate that for both uh, audio chains for left and right and create a gate. This is going to trigger our crossfaders to change when we get uh, a new MIDI signal, a new MIDI note. Okay, and so that's actually um, the, the body of our actual stutter glitch module, and the only thing we need to do now is to supply the delay parameter of the delay modules with um, a time in milliseconds. And we're going to do that uh, in a tempo synced fashion. So I'm going to start by adding a tempo info module. And the tempo info module gives us the number of beats per second. Um, and we're just going to divide 1000 over that to give us uh, the length of one beat in milliseconds, which we can use to control the single delay modules. But we don't just want to be able to sync by uh, one beat. We want to be able to have a bunch of different sync of, uh, options. So we're going to multiply that number of milliseconds uh, in one beat by another number that will uh, control the length of the delay. So this selector module here is uh, going to supply that time for us and we're going to select uh, which uh, sync effect is available at any point in time with the uh, position. We'll create a position knob to do that. Just make a few changes to that real quick. Um, then I'm going to start supplying times um, in the 0 to 7 inputs to the selector module that we can multiply against the time of one beat in milliseconds to give us some other uh, sync effects. Um, so for example <coughs> I can start by uh, putting a 2 here, and that means if 0 is selected that uh, our time is going to be double 1 beat, so it'll be 2 beats, uh, otherwise known as half a bar. Um, and then we'll create 3 eighths and 1 quarter, which is just equal to 1. Um, so we're just creating a bunch of different sync effects here, and uh, you can use different values if you want. Choosing some very standard sync lengths. <clears throat> okay, and then down at the bottom we're going to create uh, 130 seconds, which we can uh, multiply one fourth of a bar by one eighth of by one eighth point one two five to get. Now we're going to use a multi-text to um, display all the times in bars that we are going to be using for our sync times. Uh, I'm just going to create eight texts in here real quick. And then uh, the first one, as I said, is a half a bar. And the second one here is uh, three-eighths of a bar. Um, so let's put that in. Oh, but we don't want it here. We want to have it next text. Alright, so I'm just going to go through these one by one and add their appropriate times in. It's not very exciting.
<clears throat> but it will give us a display that's uh, a lot more effective and descriptive of what's happening. I mean, we could just display the time in milliseconds, but that's pretty uh, confusing if you're trying to figure out uh, what the sync time is. It's much better just to know it's three-eighths of a bar or whatever. I'm just doing all these in my head. I hope I'm getting all the math right here. And when we're done with this, we'll pretty much be done. Uh, we just need to do a little bit of rearranging on the panel. Oh, and we need to connect everything in here first, too. So, so let's do that. Um, Multi-text <coughs> by default is going to kind of look like a mess. Um, so we'll change some things with that. And we'll change it so that the text is um, where the value of the knob is currently. It's just not necessary for us to display the value of the knob. It doesn't really tell us anything about what's happening. All right, so now I have the sample loaded up. Let's see how it sounds. Just set it to repeat. Okay, so that was fun, but one thing that I don't really like about the way it's working right now is that we need to uh, change the knob, the position knob, in order to change the, the sync time. And I'd really like to just have a bunch of uh, MIDI, different MIDI notes could control uh, different sync times. And we can do that uh, all within this same module simply by choosing the position of the selector with the MIDI note instead of um, with the knob. So what we're going to do is um, create these two compare equal modules. We're going to use them to see if the pitch is above or equal to 60 and less than 68. So any note between 60 and 67 will trigger this. Um, and then we're going to multiply all those values together and so basically, if the uh, product of this multiplication is equal to 1, then we know that the MIDI uh, note was within range. And so we can multiply that by our gate value here. Um, and so if the note is not in range, the gate will never turn on, and uh, the input to the crossfader will never change, and the effect will not trigger. Um, so that's a pretty effective way of doing that. And then we can subtract 60 from the pitch. Um, <coughs> to give us the value going into both the multi-text and the selector module here. And occasionally that, well probably even often, that uh, that value will be out of range for the selector, but in those cases it won't matter because the gate will never trigger. So now that we've done that, um, just rearrange for a second and um, try again. It gives us a little bit more dynamic of an effect. We don't need to worry about <coughs> changing the position knob every time we want to get a different effect. Okay, so that's just giving us a little bit more control over what's going on and giving us a little bit more flexibility to not worry about the knob. Alright, so that's all for today. I hope you guys had fun.